Well, hello, everyone. This Sunday coming up is the 25th Sunday after Pentecost. It's proper 28A. We're coming quickly to the end of the church year. In fact, um, this Sunday coming up um, is the second last Sunday, and the Sunday after will be the last Sunday. And here at Emmanuel, we will also um, have the commemoration of the faithful departed as we will remember all those saints whom God has called home this past church year. Uh, but before we get there, um, we'll begin to the twin this 25th Sunday after Pentecost. And these Sundays uh, around this time of the church year are uh, getting us ready for the second coming of Christ, how Christ will come again. And uh, we'll, we'll hear about that. I'm going to start with our Old Testament reading from Zephaniah chapter 1. Zephaniah lived during the time of uh, Josiah, uh, king of Judah. He's, Josiah was the last of the good kings of, of uh, Israel, of Judah. In fact, if I was to put them in order as to the best, King David would be number one, Josiah would be number two. But even in the reign of Josiah, uh, the children of Israel were starting to turn their backs on God. And even though Josiah promoted the correct worship, uh, reinstituted the Passover, and temple worship, there was many still um, wanting to do their own thing, wanted to follow in their own ways and not to follow the way of the Lord. And you see that, how it plays itself out in the words of Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 1, beginning of verse 7, Be silent before the Lord your God. And really that silent is be hush, sh- sh- be quiet, shut up. Uh, and um, is uh, the Lord speaking to them and saying, uh, you know, I need you to hear this, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice and consecrated his guests. And on the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the officials and the king's sons and all who array themselves in foreign attire. On that day, I will punish everyone who leaps over the threshold and those who fill their master's houses with violence and fraud. On that day, declares the Lord, I, a cry will be heard from the fish gate, which was the lookout gate, and I think on the south wall of the temple, a wail from the second quarter, a loud crash from the hills, wail, O inhabitants of the mortar. Um, this was the business district of Jerusalem, for all the traders are no more, all who weigh out silver are cut off. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, I will punish the men who are complacent, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do evil. And really what that's saying there, those are complain saying, well, the Lord is like there, but he really doesn't have that much influence in our lives. And, he, and uh, Zephaniah, the Lord speaking through Zephaniah, is warning them, be very careful what. Uh, their goods shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty man cries aloud there. A day of wrath is that day, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. Uh, And so the Lord, through the prophet Zephaniah, is warning the people that they better get ready. They better listen, as it's set up there in verse 7. Be silent. Hush. Listen. Quit your worshiping false gods. Quit um, your, your making uh, alliances with, with uh, uh, the, the enemies of, of God. And um, while you may think you're ready and that you may know all things, the Lord is saying, you, you don't know. You, you're going to build your houses. You're not going to live there. You're going to plant vineyards, but you're not going to drink the wine. Someone else will do that. Um, and this great day, the, the Lord is near. And, and for uh, back then, um, the, the Babylonians were coming. Uh, probably a little less than 100 years after this, uh, the Babylonians would invade uh, uh, the, the last part of the kingdom of Israel, Judah, and carry them off into captivity. Uh, and the Lord warned them time and time again uh, that they needed to be careful if they didn't listen to what the Lord had to say. Now, that's true for us today, too. Um, the Lord says to us, be silent, hush, listen. 
Uh, you probably can see the events of the world going on. Um, and uh, the Lord is yelling out to us that we need to listen to him. We might think that we're okay, that we can be complacent and say, well, the Lord is neither near nor far. In fact, the Lord really doesn't have that, um, you know, uh, much impression in my life. But we need to listen to the Lord because we don't know when he's coming again. And he's warning us and he's giving us, um, you know, time to, to make things right. And so uh, that's the Old Testament reading uh, for this Sunday coming up. Let's jump over to uh, uh, the uh, 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 gospel reading from Matthew chapter 25. We've been reading through, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> reading through this in, in Matthew chapter 25. This is Holy Week again, probably Wednesday of Holy Week. Uh, once again, the Lord is... Uh, warning people that uh, and as his second coming of uh, what will happen. And today is the parable of the talents. And uh, well, let's just read through them, <clears throat> read it through it, and then we'll talk about it. For uh, Jesus says, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. Uh, to each according to his ability. And, and you see up here on top here that a talent in today's money was worth about $27,000, maybe thirty-seven, thirty thousand dollars um, and the And the owner, the master, entrusted a lot of money to this first guy. You can figure out, the do the math there. But it was always to each according to his own ability. Uh, then he went away. And he who received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five more talents. So also he who had two talents made two more talents, but he who received the one talent went and dug it in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. I made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he who had two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered me two talents. Here I made two more talents. His master said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set, uh, set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And if you notice, and I highlighted that here, that the, the, the master's response is the exact same to the one who gave five and to the one who gave two, uh, that they were good and faithful, and they were faithful over a little, uh, and now he was going to you know, have them uh, watch over a lot. But then there was also one, the last one, the one who had received one talent came forward and says, Master, I knew you to be a hard man reaping where you do not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, here you have what is yours. But the master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, lazy, not doing anything. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. The cast of the worthless servant, or cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so we see the, the contrast between the first two servants who, um, you know, were given the five talents and the two talents, and that was just a, a sum of, of money. And uh, they invested it, they worked hard for it, and they doubled it. Um, and if you notice, they didn't come back and say, you're, you're a hard guy. I was in great fear. No, it was almost with great joy that uh, they had earned doubled their 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 uh, uh, the, the the investment the master made them in them and that uh, uh, they were very very thankful and very happy with that and and obviously the master had said well done but this last one um, I find it very interesting because nowhere in the story do we hear that he was a hard man reaping where he didn't sow gathering scattered 
uh, where there was none sowed, for he was afraid. So what did he do? He didn't do anything. Now, if you know anything about business and investing, I'm sure that immediately those those the, the ones who invested the five and two towns probably didn't make it the next day, but they worked hard at it. They, they probably sacrificed. Maybe they lost a little bit one day and made more the next day. Uh, but this guy, he just buried the money. He buried this talent that was given to him. And he didn't even give it to the banker, as, as the, the master said in the story, to, to even earn the interest. And, um, you know, he, the, 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 the master was very angry. And he took that one and gave it to the man who had 10. Um, and, uh, and he threw that, that, uh, worthless servant. I like, that's a very interesting word, worthless servant in the outer darkness. And really that, what that means, he was cast into hell, uh, whether it be weeping and gnashing of teeth, um, and, uh, and seeing that. So you, you see that I had the question there, you know, what, what are you, what are you doing until the master comes again? Uh, are you going to, well, literally bury your head in the sand, bury whatever God has given to you, uh, and say, oh, I can't do this. I'm afraid I might make a mistake. And, 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 or are you going to be like the one who, who took those talents and, and invested and used it and worked and, and, uh, came back forth and showed what that showed to the master, what he did. And, and it's very interesting that, that, um, no matter what these these guys made, I'm sure he would have said, well done, good and faithful servant. And that's what we look forward to. That when Jesus comes again, he does promise those who work in the kingdom, who are striving to share the good news of God's salvation, uh, will, you know, Jesus will say, well done, good and faithful servant. And uh, while we were faithful over a little, uh, I find it very interesting that God does invest in us, that he gives us more responsibility in uh, what we do and, and how we share uh, those those uh, gifts that God has given to us. Now, whatever that God has called you to do, whatever that is, and, and it's different for everybody, but God wants you to use those gifts, talents, uh, uh, abilities uh, to further the kingdom of God. And many times it's in our own homes. Uh, with our uh, those that we come in contact with, our family and our friends, that uh, you know we serve them uh, with the gifts that God has given to us, and that uh, they may too share in the good news of God's salvation. That they too uh, will use whatever gifts that God has given to them uh, to the to the betterment to the glory of God. And 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 I think this is important that God gives to us each according to our ability. Now, it might mean and th- and that's different for everybody uh, but you know that whatever you may look at someone else and say oh look what that person has or doesn't have uh, the Lord has blessed you with the ability that you have uh, to bring glory to him to share the good news of God's salvation um, and so um, that's what God has called you to do and we look forward to the day when when the the Lord will say to each and every one of us well done good and faithful servant, you have been faithful over little, and I set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Now, our second reading, uh, the epistle reading for this Sunday coming up, is from First Thessalonians chapter five. In fact, we'll be finishing up the reading from the book of Thessalonians this Sunday. And uh, here, kind of, Paul's talking about the end times. He says, "Now concerning the times and seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything uh, anything written to you." For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Meaning we don't know when Jesus will come again. It's not if Jesus comes, but always when. Uh, And he says, while people are saying there is peace and security, then suddenly destruction will come upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. You know, when when we thought, when we think, oh, there's no way that Jesus might be coming today, that's when he's going to come. And uh, we always have to be ready for that. Uh, but uh, you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to, to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. Um, last week, Paul talked about how those who have fallen asleep in the Lord, that means those who died. Here, he's talking about um, not sleep, meaning 
uh, you're still alive, but you're not conscious of what's going on. He says, you know, uh, that we are to keep awake, you know, keep our eyes open uh, for those who sleep, sleep at, at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love for the helmet of uh, for the helmet, the the hope of salvation, and that's that's a reference to the book of Ephesians, uh, Ephesians chapter six, where we have Paul talking about the armor of God. So, how he uses that metaphor, that illustration, uh, that we do have this breastplate of faith and love, that we are protected, what covers our hearts, and uh, you know what covers our minds, that we do have faith and love and hope. Uh, and he talks about that in 1 Corinthians 13, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Um, and so that we are ready, that we that our hearts and minds are protected, um, that we put our hope and our faith and love in the Lord. Uh, so verse 9, for God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. And that's asleep meaning died. Uh, therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. And and so we always come to this part of the church here. I always enjoy this part of the church here because it does remind us that Jesus is coming again. Um, and we look forward to that day. Some days I pray, come Lord Jesus, quickly come, uh, that he would come sooner than later. Uh, but the Lord will come uh, when he's good and ready. And, you know, the question is, what what am I going to be doing until the master comes again? You know, what 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 should I be about? As we talked about that in the gospel reading, um, that uh, I should be of the Lord's work, no matter who or what I am, um, that uh, we continue uh, to uh, do the things that he's called us to do. You know, part of that is in Bible study and church attendance and devotional life and prayer, but also serving our Lord uh, in our families, in our church family, and in the world as well, uh, that we're ready for that. So it's not, uh, we shouldn't, you know, we should always be ready for the coming of the Lord. Like I mentioned before, it's not if Jesus is coming, but when he is coming. And we should always be ready for that. And then ending up with our psalm, our intro from Psalm 143. Uh, Hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithful, faithfulness, answer me. In your righteousness, enter not into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. I remember the days of old. I meditate on, on all that you have done. I pondered the work of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, Bring my soul out of trouble. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithfulness, answer me in your righteousness. So here, I mean, obviously, an, a wonderful example in the book of Psalms uh, of a prayer that we plead to the Lord, that he would listen to us, uh, that he would not enter into judgment with us, that we plea for forgiveness and that he grants us his forgiveness, that we live a life of repentance um, as we remember and meditate and ponder what he's done for us, that he would teach us um, that, um, you know, we do the will of the Lord uh, and uh, that the Lord watches over us as, you know, as we mentioned before, you know, what are we doing until uh, the Lord comes again? And that uh, we are we are doing these things. We're meditating, pondering, uh, that He may teach us, uh, that we rest in His righteousness. And then the colic of the day, Almighty and ever living God, You have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in You. Yes, we have those wonderful promises. Dispel us, uh, dispel from us the works of darkness, and grant to us to live in the light of Your Son Jesus Christ that our faith may never be found wanting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. That he does give his great promises. Uh, forgiveness, life, and salvation. 
that uh, as the work of works of darkness as Satan comes upon us, that we do live in the light of Christ, that we live, as Paul says in First Thessalonians, that we are awake um, and that we don't fall asleep in, in this world, uh, that our faith never be found wanting, that our faith continually is strengthened and, uh, and continually is maturing, uh, that we look forward to that day when Christ will come again. Well, that's the, the reading for this Sunday coming up, rather short Bible lesson, Bible study today. Uh, but uh, I pray that the Lord would prepare your hearts for this week's uh, uh, church service um, and um, these readings and prayers. And uh, let us close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.